I did not come to make you happy. They'll say, okay, celebrate Jesus. No, it's not one of the songs that I sing. We shouldn't be celebrating now. We should be weeping. Because we are walking on crutches. We are handicapped. We are crippled. And we want to change the world. But you have not, you don't listen to the news. Every religion is having a revival except Christianity. Every religion. The sons of the bond woman are caught. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Your land is already overtaken. Our children are being born into a new world. A different world. A world we don't know anything about. And because we did not exercise our spirit, we did not teach them. We taught them how to depend on the benefits from government. Now you can stay at home and they will credit your account with 1,500 euros. So you look for milk and ice fish. Christianity is dying. Those of you that are older, is this the Christianity that you met when you were younger? What made you comfortable? How come? How did you get here? I, I can see two people that are offended with my talk. The reason for your offense is Satan. Yeah, that's why you're offended. Satan wants to perpetually keep you in captivity. That's why you're offended. When someone challenges you, in the next five years, you'll still be on the same spot if you don't listen to what I'm telling you. Welcome to Apostles on Fire TV. Here you'll be getting powerful video clips that will steer you up for a glorious work with God. Enjoy the video. Thank you. Christianity is dying in our generation. And if we are going to secure a legacy of our faith for our children to inherit, then we must make effort to begin to explore God, to begin to exercise our spirit. So many people come to church these days and nothing happens to their heart. That's why Christianity is dying. So the average person knows church language. He knows the kind of things we say as pastors. He can even act a drama and act as a pastor. Meanwhile, his heart is black and dark. There is no light in it. The people that preach the gospel cannot present a scorecard of a changed life, which is supposed to be the testimony of the Christian faith. Do you know how many prophets are in this auditorium that have not manifested till now? Do you know how many evangelists are here and just warming these seats like that and the city is dying, it's in darkness? There's no evidence to show that you received anything. It means your life is a conflict. It's a major conflict because it doesn't even pass the test of Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6, there are, there are one, two, three, four expectations for any genuine believer. The first expectation is the testimony of the newness of life. I used to know him before. This was how he was. And when he stumbled upon the Lord, hallelujah, if you did not leave anything to follow Jesus, you are fake. You are not, we, are, we can argue that you are not saved. There's no evidence. You, you did not leave anything. You did not leave a boyfriend. You did not leave a career. You did not leave anything. You just continued. <laughs> you need to sit back. After this conference, sit back and ask yourself, is it? Are you there? Am I, am I still in the faith? <laughs> you need to ask yourself. Am I still in the faith? Am I still making this trip? There are four expectations. And the book of Romans is the basic book. It's the basic book. It's like, it's the discipleship material that um, Paul gives us. And it shows us 12 items on the path of spiritual progress. That's the summary of the book of Romans. The book of Romans is not a message, it's a map. If we draw the map, you will know where you backslid. You did number one, number two, then you vanished. Do you, you know this uh, uh, sat nav you are using? It there. Have you ever seen a car vanishing from the map? You move like this, and when you reach the railway station, we... <laughs> it's not the location you are looking for that is lost. It's there, but the, the vehicle itself has disappeared. That's how many of us have disappeared from the path of spiritual progress. And we are using our Sunday Sunday church to still think that we are still in the faith. Christianity is dying. That's what I came to tell you in, in, in Europe. Something drastic needs to happen to change the hand of the clock. We're already too late. And the systems in Europe have been built to make everybody a, a Euro slave. Yeah, every single person. We are running from pillar to post and you believe that that's the most justified line of action. You don't have time. There is no sacrifice for you to bring to the table so that you can grow in your spirit. Meanwhile, the Bible says that the spirit of a man shall sustain his infirmity. Oh, they say uh, Europe is designed to bend you and make you such, such and such a kind of person. Oh, sh that's when you don't have the Holy Ghost. And meanwhile, I know you're hardworking, but listen to me. When I used to work in the oil industry, you didn't used to work like me. Yes, I can challenge you with that. No. Uh, yes, I can challenge you. Sometimes we start 8 a.m., we end 11 in the night. And then we start 8 a.m. the next day, and there's no Saturday, there's no Sunday. I did that for 16 years. 
and I still had my fasting life. I still do my 70 days of fasting straight. Yes, I do eight hours of prayer with that thing. Delivered all my reports. I used to man five depots. You know what a depot is? Five. Because my colleagues won't come to work. So I need to help them. So I finish from here. I go here. Finish. I had to develop formulas. You, you don't even know what I'm talking about. You don't know what. I, under those circumstances, I was, still touch, I was still touching base with heaven. If you cannot find God when you, your schedule is tight, if you have time, you will not seek him. Mm. I know most of you are saying, if only I can stop this night shift. <laughs> you stopped it two years ago, but you are more of an unbeliever now than when your schedule was tight. The spirit of the age will haunt you, will make you a slave, will give you a thousand experiences, a thousand reasons for which you should not lay hold on the horns of the altar. A thousand reasons. I was doing that. I was climbing tanks. You know those tanks? When you climb one of it and you don't climb with food in your stomach, so you should be fasting. So even because if, if you if there's a height you climb to, you will faint if you have it. I used to do that fasting. I used to do that praying. I used to move around in tongues. Don't talk to me in the daytime. I will not answer you. Because I'm talking. I'm talking. You, you, can you answer two calls? You are talking. You are talking. You are talking. You are talking. And the reports are going out. All kinds of data. All kinds of they are coming out. We bought softwares. We created some to make that type of processing easy so that the job will still be going. We spend less time on the job and more time with God. They are not the first that have been in there. So when I did that for 16 years, it was enough training. When Jesus said I should come full time, now I can lie with on my back from morning till night praying in tongues. If I do that for three days, mommy, and I greet you, good morning, you will fall. Before them, because I have access to resources. So many of us here, and meanwhile, meanwhile, I'm not even doing well enough based on my scorecard. Huh? So I'm still preparing myself to launch into the deep beyond this point. I still need to take one one meal off my my life. Yes, I'm preparing for it. Preparing for it. I will go on a long fast, and when I go for seventy days, I will not stop again for my lifetime. Because originally God intended that your spirit will be so big and that your soul will be small. If you know that your life is supposed to be lived on the resources of the spirit, you become more diligent in ensuring that the dynamo runs because that's how you get the energy to power your life. Most of you have appliances in your spirit, like television. Eh? That has, you have not used your spirit television since you gave your life to Christ. You have not seen one vision. You don't even know what an angel looks like. And the day God succeeds in smuggling his voice into your, your spirit man, you will now say something, say something, something to me. Something spoke. Meanwhile, it took effort. It took effort. Angels had to disarm you. Sometimes they will need to allow you to fall sick terribly and drip on your hand so that your soul will be quiet. Then they say, Sandra. When you wake up, you say something. Because you don't know the way of exercising your spirit. You don't know the exercising your spirit. So you don't know the language of the spirit. You don't know the move of the spirit. Because the Bible says, holy men of old, they speak as they were moved. They were. You don't know that experience. You don't know it. You don't know it. So your vocal cord has never been lent unto the Lord for him to speak. Your television has never worked. Because there's no power to power it. Your heater has never worked. There's a dimension of fire that produce, produces light and heat at the same time. Your heat has not, not worked since you gave your life to Christ. They're running from pillar to post. And they're always giving testimony about your job that they just added three euro, added four euro. Human spirit. If you did 30 minutes work by any means today and you did not use it to pray in tongues, you are not conscious of God. And that's a spiritual ailment. You, you, you are not you normal. You are, you are, you are, it's an affliction. You are ill. You are sick. You are ill. Because the proof of life is consciousness. And that's what Jesus was trying to reveal in the book of John chapter 3 when he says, except a man be born again, he cannot see. A new line of consciousness has been born in your heart because of the presence of the Holy Spirit that sits there. So with this consciousness, this new consciousness, I can perceive what God is doing. 
I can perceive the policy of heaven. I can perceive what is going on in that civilization. But you cannot perceive, not because you don't have the receptacle that can perceive. You have never exercised your spirit so that the perceptions can be. So you have decided to sentence yourself to live on the sphere of carnality. And in the flesh, you attain to your least potential. So what you are is your creation, it's your design, it's your idea of how your life should be, not God's idea. And may you not grow too old before you take a stand. I did not come to make you happy. They'll say, okay, celebrate Jesus. No, it's not one of the songs that I sing. We shouldn't be celebrating now. We should be weeping. Because we are walking on crutches. We are handicapped. We are crippled. And we want to change the world. But you have not, you don't listen to the news. Every religion is having a revival except Christianity. Every religion. The sons of the bond woman are caught. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Your land is already overtaken. Our children are being born into a new world, a different world, a world we don't know anything about. And because we did not exercise our spirit, we did not teach them. We taught them how to depend on the benefits from government. And you can stay at home and they will credit your account with 1,500 euros. So you look for milk and ice fish. They never saw you have a prayer room when you go to pray. They never saw you. You just come back every day famished and then you, you, you lie on you. That's what they... So, it's not God that made you like that. You are the one that made yourself like that. That's what I'm telling you. You made yourself. That's what you chose. Not because that. Not because there's no provision for you to overrun that kind of operation. The energy that should drive your life is inside there. And until you know how to stir up that place. You have never been there before. That's why you are this. Witches have never taken your name and spread it across their covens and said, this one is our problem. This man is our problem. This man is our, is our challenge. This man must be cut off. This man must be killed. You have never been there before. So you, you, you have never had the opportunity to know what a nameless power can come out of your human spirit. You have never been there before. You've not seen the, the reason to pray because whenever you wake up, the train is always there. You walk into it and it comes back. The bus is there, the electric. The, 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 the tram is there. So, see, as sure as tomorrow is, there will be train. So you live in the natural. But in your city, some of the best witches are this. This is your city. They have the same amenities, but they are spiritual people. They've been, they've been, it's so powerful that the systems, they control the systems. And they have made you to believe a lie. You might pray for five minutes and you, you, you didn't hear God. Not because God was not speaking. You don't know how to pick his frequency. You may pick, and, and in that state, you cannot survive an emergency. Because in an emergency, you cannot pick the frequencies of God. You didn't train yourself that way. It will not happen all of a sudden. It's the way you train yourself that God will let you with you. I, I can see two people that are offended with my talk. The reason for your offense is Satan. Yeah, that's why you're offended. Satan wants to perpetually keep you in captivity. That's why you're offended. When someone challenges you, in the next five years, you'll still be on the same spot. If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, Christianity is dying. Those of you that are older, is this the Christianity that you met when you were younger? What made you comfortable? How come? How did you get here? Most of you were evangelists that were dispatched to Europe to begin to recover the heritage of God. Only few responded. The rest felt it was for economic purposes that they came. It was So everything they did was self-centered, self-seeking. And you could not see, you could not see that the lands from whence the gospel came to us, God is now sending us back there with the same gospel. Those guys had no reason to be in Africa. They had no reason. There no reason. Pai when did he come? 1950. What are you doing in Nigeria in 1950? And he didn't stay in Lagos. Went to Elisha. It wasn't on the map. They had not drawn the map to accommodate Elisha that. A missionary organization came and told him, move to Lagos and we'll support you. He said, God did not send me to Lagos. He accepted. Can you see the kind of conviction this man had? We came here. We don't have roads in Nigeria. We came here and then we saw the roads and said, ah. Is there a life like this? And the mission field. That is why I will come when you call me. You had opportunities to be anything you wanted. In this number of years you have said you, you decided that you will kindle the lamp. May your days be long. Amen. It's very easy. I'm still a professional even now. I saw your, your infrastructure in my field. If I take my certificate there, I will get a job. If I don't get here, I will get in the Netherlands. Yeah. I still know it. So if it's how to make money, ah, 
I was, we were making it. But Jesus was crying. And I knew he was crying because every time I went to him in prayer, his tears increased. So I said, okay, what can I do to help? He said, leave that job. It was two weeks for me to be a manager in the oil industry. Where you have a big table. You know that table? Very big table. And you speak with baritone. <laughs> Christianity is dying. And once again, God began to look for foot soldiers. Begin to look for men that will be willing to sacrifice. That know that they owe God something. For him to save their wretched soul, they owe him something. And they are ready to deliver on the promise of their heart that in my time, in my day, as I walk this wall, I will be an object of pleasing to you. We went for a crusade. I went for a crusade in Mombasa. If you know Kenya at all, Mombasa is a Muslim settlement. It's a Muslim government. So I was on the pulpit and I felt the healing power of God come into the service. So I took advantage of it. And I began to pray for the sick. Now, there was this guy, nine years old. Um, I don't know. This black stuff here, I don't know the name. It's, it's, it's here. Then this black one is here. So, instead of it to be here and here, it's here. What's the medical name for that? All right. It's exactly that name that that person called. <laughs> so, that was how the guy was born. Then I prayed for the sick. And his eyes were restored. So, when we were taking testimonies, I noticed it was just a nine-year-old boy. What are you? Why are you here? You did not come here alone. Who did you? Come? The reason why the mom couldn't follow him is because she's, she's a Muslim. And how can she, she contain the situation? It's, it's a contradiction. So, she sent the boy to come and I said, no, you can't talk here. You don't have a voice. Somebody needs to speak for you. You are too small to speak. That's how I insisted. And then the woman came. I said, why are you? Why did you stay back? She said, well, the reason is because she's a Muslim. So when the, she told us how the child was born and what happened that day, I told him that when this child grows, tell him it was Jesus that healed him. And I did not even ask her to give her life to Christ. I just said, when the child grows, tell him his eyes were like this. Thing. And then Jesus made it like this. And I asked her to leave. Because I didn't want to create problems for our pastor. Because when I finish preaching and going, our pastor won't go. He'll be on ground. So I did not lead the woman to Christ publicly. And I didn't even lead her to Christ. I just said, take your miracle, but remember, Jesus she couldn't sleep. That, that my Jesus that I said that healed her child. Oh, the next day when they were holding midweek service, this woman now appeared there. This time, she gave her life to Christ. And once in a month, we normally do 10 hours of prayer. So, the 10 hours of prayer, the woman's husband was the one that dropped her. Because he himself knows that miracle. And I sent a message to them. It was Jesus who that so the anointing is a resource now 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 she would have the healing would have taken place because the healing anointing was there but i wanted it to make profit there's a purpose for which god gave the anointing it should produce that result for which jesus was willing to spend these resources the anointing is not there to authenticate my ministry and to show people that i'm a prophet that i can say things and it comes upon they're supposed to bring profit to the kingdom of God. After a few weeks, persecution broke out of the woman. But we had taught her how to pray for 10 hours. She went on her knees. And you know when people give their life to Christ, initially, God answers prayer. Mm. The hand of God went to fight against the people that rose up against her. So they had to accept that it is the God of heaven that called her to go that way. So that miracle produced prophet. The same way God will ask this grace I give you. This is what it was supposed to produce. This is what you were using it to do. You need to come and give account. Why I did not get my expectation. My return on investment. That's the same way God will ask you for every year that passed through your hand. The greatest, the most terrible God itself it blocks you from God at all. So you are seeing yourself, you can see God. God will need to defeat self before you can actually serve the will of God. And if someone that has not been dealt with is anointed, he will use the anointed to serve it. So when people get born again, I take them through a drill of how to pray for 10 hours, how to hear God. So people that are born again for 8 months, you need to see them in, in our cantonment. You need to see them. They were not trained to be Christian. They were trained to be militants. Because what, Christians these days, I don't know what they are, but 
They were trained to know God. You can't, you can't break their faith. It doesn't matter how much poverty you bring. You can't break their faith. They have something to die for. That's why they have something to live for. You want to, be, you want to remain on life support to live forever. Because you don't have anything to die for. I preached something the other time and some people wanted to kill me. They didn't, I, I had to tell them on air that there are so many people that, that are afraid of death. I'm not one of them. In my journey with God, I've seen where I'm going. You can't threaten me with death. It, it will make sense to other people. Not my type. So I'm not making any arrangement for protection or say, okay, let's get. If you can wake up and shoot me and I die, if that day will come, let it come. But if you still, if it's the breath of the human being taking you need for your lungs, you will not wake up that day. I know how long I will live. Oh my. My own journey is not for chance. It's not given to chance. I know how long I will live. I will announce my exit five years to my queen. It's not everybody that came here to ride the car. Now, so let us analyze your life. Are you really dependent on God? Is it true? Or you are dependent on the systems of Belgium and the Netherlands? Are you dependent on God because you are in financial stress? And maybe when the thing is losing out, losing out, and then you enter into the 8,000 euro mark per month, you stretch out. Satan will never leave any man. Man, you are a problem to Satan. You are the only vessel through which God can be made manifest in this civilization, in this realm. And Satan will like to obscure God from this realm. So he will haunt you. And if he sees that you are so determined, he can even make you prosper. That means he, he has settled you. Gives you a job that walks you out and the pay is good. You'll be flying business class everywhere to New York. You are delivering papers, conferences with the wise men of the earth. And then when, when they, you'll be snapping global pictures. Good. Snap one in, in Addis Ababa. Snap the other one in New York. Snap in Japan. Mm -hmm. He will haunt every one of us with that vision. The vision of being independent from God. He will, he will haunt every one of us. And he will repackage his vision in subtle ways to ensure that it is relevant to your context. The project came under attack the moment man became a living citizen. So the father has done his part, the son has done his part, but he will not allow the spirit to finish his part. So, Satan will ensure that you don't get born again. And if by any means you escaped and got born again, he will ensure that you will never know the Holy Ghost. Because as long as you don't know the Holy Ghost, you will still be operating like a living soul. Years will pass and your life will not make any meaning that is significant to your calling. You will be a creature of earth, like a principality that fell out of his consolation. You pass through time. Meanwhile, you were supposed to be a soul that strikes the courts of eternity. A man that can cut covenant with God on earth, like Abraham. And if God wants to move upon the earth, it will be the agreement he had with Abraham that will give him legitimacy to come here. I've been studying Abraham. What did he find in God? Jews, Christians, and Muslims refer to him as their ancestor. What did he find? Was he not born like a, a human, just like us? What platform would your life create for the generation to come? What have you done today that God will look at and say, because of my servant? Now, what is, check your motivation, the things you do. What is it from the Bible? Is it the Holy Spirit that whispered it? It's still that pride. So he has been able to find modern ways of binding us to the old bondage of Adam. He will preoccupy you and keep you under lock and key. You will have a redeem to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. You will never, you will develop everything but your spirit. In your career, you'll come out tops. Two master's degree in a short time. Get the best job in the land. Have opportunity to travel the world. Build skyscrapers. You have one apartment in Dubai. You have the other one in North Carolina. You have four big suits in Nigeria, all for rent. You'll be sitting down, taking coffee and seeing a lot. This one is in pounds. This one is in Europe. This one is in USD. This is in Naira. And then, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's where he wants to put you. So that your life and what you call life is on the plane of men that are living souls. And you don't measure up. You don't measure up with men that are living spirits. So you, you ensure that you are not 
placed in that category so that you will not see your deficiency. So whenever the kind of books you read, her books that okay, okay, this is where Warren Buffett is. This is where Dangote. Yes. Okay. This is where I am. And uh, if I can sharpen my tools, <laughs> you will never arrive home. That journey. Our ancestors have trodden that path. The end of it is vanity. You are living life without any reference. So it's utopian. It's in limbo. He has no foundation. That's the kind of existence he wants us to pursue. I came with a prayer point just for this opening service. You want to speak to the Spirit of God. You want to pray to Him. And say, make me. I'm 46, I'm 47, but I've not been made. I'm 49, I've not been made. I just clocked 50, I've not been made. I have three kids. Two in the universities, I've not been made. I've just been walking the streets of, of Belgium, walking the streets of Vienna, walking the streets of Europe. I have not been made. The purpose for which I was born, I have not apprehended it. Make me Holy Spirit. Oh. Coffee like us is a sanatam belike. Safris cope mene uria skito brondo bocota bantali. Yet set of breast kito conde la irobos cantelli. Where has he kept you? Where's the flame of the evangelist that you had 12 years ago? Where's the flame of the intercessor? Swallowed up in the winter. Cry to him. Cry to him. Cry to him. For it's the spirit of the Lord that has made me. The breath of the Almighty giveth me life. It's the spirit of God. It's the spirit of God that has made me. The breath of the Almighty, it gives me life. It's the spirit of God that has made me. Make me Holy Ghost. There is a way you make men. That's how you made right hand bonke. He became the angel of evangelism. Everywhere he touched down, the powers of darkness had to give way. Everywhere he touched down, men were set at liberty from diverse yokes of the devil. It is the spirit of God that has made me. It is the spirit of God that has made me. Make me. Make me Holy Ghost. Make me Holy Ghost. In this grace conference, I come to present myself before you for a fresh making. A fresh making. A fresh making. I've been running from pillar to post. I've been running the right ways without reference, without direction. And I ask tonight, do something, do something, do something, do something in my life. Thank you for watching. Do well to subscribe, like, share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what God is doing from this platform. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, and we are on Twitter. Thank you.